rapid dissemination through projects, but also through commercial means so that the cassava crop can be sustained in a commercially driven system. So this is a cassava tuberous root. Um, it's a good size, but you can see the, the color of the, um, the, the root cortex there is kind of brown, black. That's a typical symptom of cassava brown streak disease. Brown streak has suddenly become a major pandemic. You're talking, you know, hundreds of thousands of people whose food security is threatened. So there's been a race on for the researchers to try and identify ways of combating them. Um, and the main approach has been through trying to develop host plant resistance. So resistant varieties that don't get affected, um, or if they do get affected, have a minimal effect. The maize program at IIT has been geared uh, to tackle the major production constraints, uh, including productivity, agronomic fitness, and adaptability of the crop to tropical savannas and the forest zone, uh, as well as to improve its uh, nutritional and also post-harvest quality. Here in IHA, we're developing new yam varieties and new technology from yam research that can be adopted by farmers and industry um, to make yam uh, more profitable and uh, increase productivity. We have a strong team here in IHA working on seed multiplication and to rapidly get clean seed into the farmer's hands. Um, th this technology, the combination of of seed, agronomy, and breeding and genetics can give uh, farmers uh, new opportunities um, to even enhance the value of yam in Nigeria and West Africa. Well, IIT has a major activity in terms of research in cowpea. It is a crop that is grown mostly in the dry areas of uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, it's being developed to actually adapt better and perform even in the face of drought. We use the genetic uh, germplasm material that is available to facilitate this process. So we use both uh, conventional genetics uh, breeding, we also use uh, molecular tools such as molecular markers to facilitate progress in the development of cowpea varieties that are resilient uh, to climate change. In IITA, we develop and deploy cutting-edge genomic tools, including innovative uh, molecular breeding schemes, diagnostics, in vitro propagation, and genetic engineering to accelerate uh, development of superior varieties. Here in Nigeria, we have world-class laboratory with competencies in DNA and RNA analysis, sequencing, fingerprinting, tissue culture, and bioinformatics. We also have laboratories in Benin, Kenya, and Tanzania. We provide training on different topics to enable our partners benefit from biotechnology. Our facilities are also open to our partners. A lot of uh, Africans eat a lot of carbohydrate foods, and to supplement that, we need a lot of protein, at least for improvement, and for longevity, and for health purposes. Varieties that we develop here are of high protein content. And again, we have varieties that are amenable to what you call integrated soil fertility management. That is an aspect that is required for climate smart uh, agriculture. Transgenic is a tool in which you can transfer the gene from outside of that species, even within that species, to the other species. So this is the banana transgenic, which has the gene from the green pepper in it. We test them under the glasshouse condition. The controlled non-transgenic plants develop symptoms and they completely wilt within month time. But our transgenic plants doesn't develop any symptom and they actually are quite resistant. When we've been able to come up with these varieties, the next challenge so that we can get the benefit out of them is to make sure that the planting material or the seeds of this can get into the hands of farmers. And there we're working 
very closely with our partners in the national systems and then development agencies and seed companies in the private sector. At the Genetic Resources Centre of IITA, we have very important international collections of many of the most important staple crops of Sub-Saharan Africa. The diversity that we have within these collections is very important as a cornerstone of breeding programs to increase food security within Africa. IITA, when we are talking about empowering women, addressing gender issues, disparities between men and women, in terms of access to knowledge, in terms of income, decision making, it's not just a rhetoric. Both men and women have benefited, especially how women are empowered through these technologies, through our interventions. If you want to bring more investment and, you know, expand the impact, then we have, we have evidence. That's what we are talking about. Me, adult old man, into woman now. The factory in Indy bring me up small, 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 small. Because if I work here, if we get small profit, me boss man, they say, yeah, this. So now from this factory, the home, they stands firm. The BIP is quite unique in its approach because what we try to do is we take technologies developed at the IETA, which already have proof of concept. We scale them up, not just as a project, but in a commercial way. We also have the objectives from the IETA, that we have to bring technologies to the market at an affordable price for the farmer. So from here, this is a platform, it's incubated, it's somewhat protected, but our aim is to get them outside in the market as free businesses. Youth unemployment is a very serious challenge in Africa, and everyone will agree with me that it's time to begin to engage the youth in productive avenues of agriculture. So basically, the IITA Youth Agripreneurs, IA, started off in August 2012. We never saw agribusiness or agriculture as a gold mine, but today we are proud to be called farmers. Most of people, even young people, they are taking agriculture like last option. But nowadays, I see most of young people engaging in agriculture. There is no way Africa is going uh, to make progress without addressing key issue of uh, agriculture production. And uh, for Africa to do that has uh, basically to increase uh, production, agriculture production, and IT is uh, at the forefront uh, of addressing those issues uh, because uh, it's dealing with the major crops here in Africa. So IITA is 50 years old this year, 2017. We are very encouraged by the progress that has been made thus far. But we are also conscious of the fact that even more research and delivery will be required, which is aimed at transforming African agriculture in such a way that agriculture really becomes the engine for economic development for African countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me take this opportunity also to announce that we have representatives of a number of ministries with us. I'll just mention two. We have the re, um, representative of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Mohamed uh, Maidugu, uh, who is in our midst. And uh, I am informed also that there is a representative of the Ministry of Science and Technology and the Ministry of Environment, also in our midst. Can we welcome them with a clap, please? At this point, it's a pleasure to call on the board chair of IITA, Dr. Bruce Coleman, uh, to give us his uh, remarks. Former Presidents, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, welcome to IITA's 50th anniversary celebration. Although IITA got started in 1967, the vision for the Institute and other CGIR institutes 
dates back to 1962, when George Harar, president of the Rockefeller Foundation, and Forrest Hill, vice president of the Ford Foundation, came up with the idea of establishing an international agricultural research center in Africa. Following a visit to Nigeria in 1963, a recommendation was made to establish the institute in Ibadan. The government of Nigeria acquired uh, the land and, uh, in 1966, and funds were allocated from the Ford Foundation uh, for building the IITA headquarters. And of course, um, former President uh, uh, Gowen signed the country agreement uh, with IITA, and he is present with us today. So today, IITA is one of 15 research centers within the CGAR system. It has operations in 15 countries in Africa, with four hubs coordinating the research in West, South, Central, uh, uh, and Eastern Africa. The Institute employs 200 scientists and a total staff of close to 1,500. It has state-of-the-art science buildings and facilities, so it has come a long way since its inception in 1967. Its accomplishments are numerous, and I'm not going to mention, mention them here because they were explained very well in the, in the uh, uh, video that we just uh, saw. And I'd just like to uh, re-emphasize that those accomplishments are achieved with many partners, including the other CGIAR centers, um, national programs, and also universities. So these are great accomplishments, but major challenges remain. In 1967, when IITA was, was established, the population of Africa was 340 million people. Today, there are four times that many, 1.3 billion. It is expected that the world population is going to increase to between 9 and 10 billion by 2050. So agriculture production must continue to increase. IITA will continue to play a major role in achieving these uh, increases and in overcoming poverty and hunger in Africa and elsewhere. As we have seen in the video, it has a medium-term goal of bringing 11 million Africans uh, out of poverty and restoring and revitalizing 7.5 million hectares of degraded land. So a focus uh, of the Institute uh, will be on the delivery of proven CGIAR technologies to African farmers. This will uh, again involve numerous partnerships with national and international organizations, and IITA has recently restructured itself to handle this new focus uh, and uh, the partnerships that are involved. So the strength of IITA over its first 50 years has been its dedicated people who are committed to their research to solve the problems of hunger and poverty in Africa. I am sure that this will continue to be the case for the next 50 years. The IITA board provides oversight of the programs, operations, and financial health of the Institute. And on behalf of the trustees of IITA, I would like to say what a pleasure it is to serve on the board of this well-managed, productive institute. I'm sure that over the 50 years of IITA, trustees of previous boards would have said the same thing. I would also like to ex express sincere appreciation to IITA's partners and sponsors, a number of whom are in attendance today at this celebration. Without your support, our accomplishments would not have been possible. So congratulations to IITA on its 50th anniversary. The future is bright for our institute. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Bruce Coleman. Let me take this opportunity also to formally announced that uh, I missed Senator Ridwan Soji Akanbi when I first recognized uh, the dignitaries. 
He's representing Oyo South Senatorial uh, District. Now we have come to the point where we have to invite our own Director General, uh, Teranya Sanginga, uh, to come over and uh, share his thoughts on, on where we are at. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, I have bad news for ITA. This morning we had uh, a squash game uh, with uh, Mr. President. As he promised yesterday, uh, we started at 7 o'clock, and uh, I was expecting with home advantage that I was going to win that game. <laughs> but uh, he won. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the score was 2-1. And I told him, I will retaliate. <laughs> Anyway, President Gowan, welcome, sir. Pre <laughs> President Ugasanjo, welcome. <laughs> President Adesina, welcome. <laughs> President Kanayo, welcome. <laughs> and all protocol observers. <laughs> yeah, so what I would like to do here is uh, trying to link uh, the leadership of this country with the development of IITA. And uh, we are so lucky that uh, all that leadership uh, is here today. Um, what a way of celebrating the 50th anniversary. President Gohan, thank you so much. Now, here, and I'll go to those personalities. Look at this picture. Where is the pointer? Here. President Gohan was uh, 31 year old. <laughs> and uh, the question I asked him yesterday, and I keep thinking about, it was just a time, one year after he has taken power, that the civilian war started in Biafra. And as a head of state, you have one big part of your country going to disintegrate. Your only and sole objective will be basically to try to reunite the country. You won't have time to think about a lot of things because that will be your priority. And I was just wondering, what happened to him when this is the Rockefeller Foundation uh, and the Ford Foundation came uh, with a request to establish a research center at, at 1,000 hectares of land. Nobody will ever imagine that uh, will be a priority. Uh, I will stop a little bit. I see the Minister of Agriculture coming in. So welcome, so hello, bienvenue, Monsieur le Ministre. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so that's a question. I think, I'm sure President Gouon is going to probably answer. And we will appreciate to know what was going in your mind during uh, that uh, period. But what happened as well, the time you took that decision, Nigeria was doing very well. And that's the time we talked about the pyramid of uh, granite. But during that period, the early days of IETA, we work on two major crops which will have a lot of effect even today. That's the expansion of soybean and maize. Between 67 
And today, IIT has released almost 400 varieties of maize and has moved as a zone of maize to the north. IITA, because of the breeding work which has been done here on soybean, almost 300 varieties, and we see soybean moving from uh, on the middle belt from Benue to almost to Kano, and Nigeria become uh, the first producer of soybean, but still with deficit for the moment. And these two crops are going to be very important for nutrition of the people, but they are going to drive the poultry and fishery industry. So. This is to say, at Accra, show these pictures. But the most striking one is this one. President Gohan, could you imagine in 67 that this place was going to look like this and like it is today? That's what I call vision. That's vision. That's 50 years ago. It was just like you were dreaming. And uh, yesterday it was really very interesting when uh, we were discussing on the table. And uh, you explained to us how you sent Colonel Obasanjo during that time to go and uh, basically and drive the war in Biafra. And so we learned that uh, he um, accepted the surrender of uh, the Biafra on 15, 1970, still in your government. During the time we were working on uh, soybean and maize, Cassava was considered to be a poor crop man. Even in this institute, we never paid too much attention to cassava. And Nigeria was uh, behind uh, Congo, Thailand, Brazil in terms of production. During that period, Nigeria was producing only um, um, 12 million metric tons. But it, it was during that period as well when we had um, a fatal disease of millibug, which almost killed cassava from Zanzibar to this place here today. And I remember during one uh, meeting of Zero Hunger, which uh, President Obasanjo was presiding, I asked him the question, Mr. President, can you imagine Nigeria without cassava? As the president said, impossible. <laughs> and I said, yes, Mr. President, impossible. In Nigeria, at least you don't eat leaves. But in DRC, we eat roots, we eat leaves, we eat everything. So if cassava is not there, we are not going to exist. And uh, yes, it was because of the Milliburg. And you can see on this picture how the damage was. And it was ITA, basically, that came with a solution for these uh, terrible diseases. Then President Obasanjo became the president of Nigeria in 1999. I call it President Obasanjo Cassava Revolution. What he did, I was the remember said cassava was neglected and so on, but he saw some wisdom in cassava and he created the presidential initiative on cassava. And uh, that presidential initiative basically revolutionized cassava in Nigeria. Cassava was not considered as uh, just a source of gari, of food, that's the time we start talking about ethanol. We start talking about high quality cassava flowers. And we start talking about um, cassava in bread. And uh, we start talking about uh, vitamin A cassava. And I remember every time when I went to visit him, the first question he asked me, what is new at IITA? As the first time I said, Mr. President, we have cassava bread. And President Adesina had come, uh, basically, and um, tested it. He didn't know that he was even eating cassava. My wife, Charlotte, was uh, giving him full of cassava. And he kept eating, eating. And we told him, after all, this is cassava bread. He didn't believe it, and he took it to President Jonathan Goodluck. And uh, yes, and uh, in terms of advocacy, during that time, I remember in Tanzania, we went uh, with President Robert Sanjoy. You can see him trying to uh, influence President Kikwete, um, telling him, no, no, this cassava, has, this bread has cassava in it. And Tanzania has been basically imitating this for the moment. 
Yeah, in the institution in 2011, we had a serious crisis. Um, we had made a mistake an institution, and that mistake translated in uh, a loss of uh, uh, funding. Uh, the donors uh, got angry. They cut the money for IETA for uh, almost 11 months. And uh, also in 2011, there was kind of negligence at the institution. I think it's going, it was going a little bit down. It was not the way it was really managed. And coming as a new DG and uh, coming in all these kind of circumstances, difficult circumstances, we needed a voice. And so I traveled to Abeo Kuta and uh, went uh, to see uh, President Obasanjo and uh, asked him to be our ambassador. And that voice was very, very useful. In three years' time, we saw a lot of changes in this institution. First of all, we started building infrastructure in some other parts of Africa. And you see here, we built, we built the best probably laboratory of plant health in Tanzania. As an example, uh, we built um, a resource management center in DRC. And during that period, we tripled our budget here. And we doubled the number of personnel we had here at IIT. And, uh, and basically, the moral of our, our staff went up. And, uh, and uh, well, Mr. President, thank you. <laughs> then the third period was uh, the period of agricultural transformation agenda. And there came a young minister uh, who was coming from uh, Kenya and Nigeria, very ambitious for Nigeria. And uh, what he did was uh, basically uh, what was very important was a change of mindset of how agriculture should be perceived. That change of mindset, that agriculture become a business and not um, uh, just an act, uh, social activity was really very important and to be very important even in the future. Uh, we saw with this program, uh, food production increases uh, here in Nigeria. And do so there is so much to say about that. But what is really important at IIT here, we were convinced that that was the way to go and deliver the technology and we created two major programs uh, the one which is uh, called the business incubation platform, where basically we start building even factory here in Nigeria, we're going to see it, uh, to deliver some of the technology which were uh, very, very, very important. And there we had a lot of help from the Get Foundation uh, to make sure that we're doing uh, the right things. The second program was uh, based on was based on the presumption that our farmers today are as old as I am. 60 years old, if you are in Fashola, you see a farmer with 60 years old like me, he can't stand up, he can't. And we're trying to imagine that the gap between those farmers and the young people we have here is almost 40 years. And these young people are not interested in agriculture. So, trying to imagine if we just don't do anything about those young people, in 20 years' time, we're not going to have farmers here in Africa. So we created a program called the Youth in Agribusiness. And it's because of this program and the support we've been having from uh, the president of the ADB that we're going to name uh, the building after him. And this afternoon, you hear more about that. The third, what follows is uh, what the government, the current government is doing, uh, the green alternatives. I think this is really very important. If uh, the acting president was here, I was going to remind him about one of the speech he made, I think, uh, one month ago. And every time when I visit a governor, and I visit many of them, the slogan is every time, let's go back to land. 
let's go back to land. Let's go back to land because the petroleum products are not paying anymore. And two weeks ago, we had the pleasure of having the Honorable Minister of Agriculture here, um, Chief uh, Adu Obe. It was a very interesting visit. And uh, what is really very important is that uh, his uh, green alternative is building on uh, agriculture transformation agenda. That's really good because everybody was expecting a somersault of policies and so on. So we're very, very, very pleased that and they are sitting together. And uh, maybe we should. <laughs> uh, one important message uh, coming from him has been commercializing, commercializing the, the product of agriculture. And uh, he's uh, set the tone with Yam. And uh, he uh, started that movement of Yam. And the people have been criticizing him, saying, uh, basically, uh, yeah, we are selling all Yam. Uh, what are we going to eat here? But he was very pleased to see that it's IITA here. We are in forefront with uh, technologies for the moment which are going to sustain that commercialization. An example here is uh, uh, just down here is a lorry. You take almost 10 lorries to take cuttings of cassava. You transform to go and uh, probably plant 10 hectares of land. But the 10 Tons trailers could be replaced, but with 10 boxes that you can put in a small car, and you go and plant, and you have the same, same, same density. Those are the technologies we are going to see um, that is um, uh, here. Now, ITA is not only about um, um, uh, research. We build capacity, and we build leadership. I want to give you a few examples. Here is President Kandayo. You won't recognize him. Here he is, who is the DG, or former DG of IITA. What was the name again? Gamble was the first uh, DG. And here he is in my country. He's in Mwazi in DRC, working on Milliburg, Cassava Milliburg. And uh, And he was here as a research assistant here in ITA. Not even a student, research assistant, he was a worker. And during this time, when you are a research assistant, you think you will never be a professor or you're not hopeful at all. He's among the probably the lowest grade here. But he became a scientist, he went to DRC, he became a DG of WARDA and president of IFAD. <laughs> and uh, probably the new chairman of the CG. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> here, there is a young man too, here. And, uh, oh, you do recognize this guy? <laughs> That's uh, Akina Desina. One of the scientists here who is the DG of IITA. As I wish I was a DG during that period, and you're sitting near me. <laughs> <laughs> then he became a vice president of AGRA, honorable minister of agriculture, president of ADV, and now food price. <laughs> And here, I'm sure you can't recognize this guy. I was playing football. But uh, I did my PhD work here, here at IITA. And I became a scientist here at IITA. I became a director. I went out. Now I'm a DG. And maybe next time I'll be a president like Kanayo. <laughs> Now, I, I would like to, to conclude and saying what is next for IIT for the next 50 years. I would like to see this place become the Vatican or the mecca 
of agriculture, or transforming agriculture in Africa. And the reason, <laughs> and the reason is simple, only two arguments. We import 35 billion worth of food in the continent. If we don't do anything, it's going to be 110 billion food. And we are importing what we are producing. Importing what we are producing. The generation of uh, our farmer, as I said, there is a gap. If we don't have new farmers, the young people we have, if they don't become farmers, we are going to be in serious trouble. And you correlate lack of farmers with the importation of the food, then you have a disaster. The third argument for the future, and for me that is the most painful one, is that this institution like IITA is funded 99% from external money. So when these external forces decide to stop funding what happened to us. And there have been few examples, only two. In 94, ITA had almost 10 breeder of soybean. And I don't know what is happening. In the US, they thought Nigeria and Africa is going to pose a competition for soybean for US. And uh, there were message, President Babangida was there, a message came through ITA, stop funding soybean research. And it stopped for almost 20 years. So these are the consequences of us not investing in, um, uh, basically, in our own, 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 own mean. Lastly, and I believe that uh, for an institution like IITA to survive in the future, we have to change our mindset. And I was talking with the Honorable Minister when he was here two weeks ago, to give us the permission to start commercializing some of the technologies. Because what is the difference between Syngenta, and here in IT we can create a Syngenta here in IT. And uh, a Syngenta has a, pro a production line, and it has a delivery line, and it has a research line. Why can't we do that at IT? All what we need are this little permission. So, let me finish again where I started. President Gowon, President Vasanjo, thank you very much for your vision and your wisdom. Thank you so much. Can we do better? Can we appreciate our... This presentation highlights the fact that we are who we are today because of people, people that have supported us and have been part of everything that we have been able to achieve. Thank you very much, Dr. Sanginga. Let me also uh, make one or two announcements, a recognition. Uh, His Excellency, the Governor of your State, uh, is represented here by his deputy, Senator uh, Chief Moses Adeyemi. Uh, he is representing His Excellency, the Governor of your State. Um, I also want to formally introduce the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Chief Audu Ugbe, who has joined us. And uh, very quickly, I want to recognize um, our sister directors generals from our sister institutions, uh, three of them for now, Dr. Jimmy Smith uh, coming to us from Nairobi with Illyri, <laughs> Dr. Barbara Wells coming to us all the way from uh, Peru uh, with uh, SIP, and uh, we have um, coming to us from um, Benin, the, the Africa Rice uh, Center, Dr. Roy McCauley, is he here? 
Oh, he's in there. Okay. Oh, you've already moved to Abidjan. Okay. So there is movement, which is very good. I have also been informed that uh, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development is also representing the Vice President or the Acting President of uh, Nigeria. So let's give him... Uh, you know. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have some brief anniversary messages and we will begin with a very interesting one. This is, you know, when we started planning for this, we really felt it would be wonderful if we could get the president of Rockefeller Foundation and the president of Ford Foundation uh, to come to be with us. And we engaged them very actively. Um, there is a representative of Ford Foundation, you see in this room? Very good. He, he is here representing Ford Foundation. But the two presidents initially said, well, we couldn't... Uh, come because of a lot of things, but we agreed to do a joint video. And I'm wondering what it took to get these two presidents together to do a joint video to greet us. So, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, listen to the video greetings. The 50th anniversary of Parker and I have the great honor of serving as president of the Ford Foundation and standing here with my good friend Raj Shah. It's an honor to address you all and to celebrate the 50th anniversary of IITA. And I'm Raj Shah, and I'm excited to be here with my friend Darren. Uh, and I just started as the new president of the Rockefeller Foundation. I want to wish you all the best as you gather to celebrate and commission the new Akin Adesina Agropreneur Building. And I want to extend a special greeting to your guest of honor, President Obasanjo, who has done so much to fight mm. for agriculture in Africa and around the world. For both of our foundations, we are so extremely proud of all of you in this audience tonight. Five decades of investment work that has changed the world in so many ways. So we want to celebrate all of the talented individuals at IITA and the SEAT system who has made the impossible become possible. The Rockefeller Foundation has more than a hundred year history of tackling some of the biggest problems around the world. I think I can say, and I suspect all of you will agree, that the thing we are singularly most proud of is our support and partnership to make the Green Revolution happen. We collectively helped move more than a billion people off the brink of hunger and starvation. And it's accomplishment that inspires all of us to dream big today about what we can do for the next generations of those who are vulnerable and in need. So I couldn't agree more, Raj. At the Ford Foundation, we look at our work in the context of what we call the three I's, supporting brilliant individuals, ideas, and vibrant institutions who are changing the world. It was McGeorge Bundy, the former president of the Ford Foundation, who said that the creation of the CGIAR system was a, quote, remarkable chapter in the diplomacy of international assistance, end quote. It was a combination of science, technology, that propelled the vision of a simple idea, a simple idea that succeeded and changed the world. This idea was best characterized by someone I know we all respect deeply, who said that food is the moral right of all who are born into this world. We still believe in Dr. Borlaug's basic idea today, and we'll continue to put resources, effort, energy, and leadership into the fight against hunger for many years to come. You inspire each and every one of us by helping to realize the dream the dream that we can live in a world that is fair and just. Thank you for the wonderful work and science you've brought to so many parts of the world that otherwise wouldn't have it. And congratulations on a remarkable 50 years, and we wish you all the best for the future. Congratulations. Wow. I'm Darren Walker, and I have the great honor of... This is really wonderful. And uh, I intend that we would do a real thank you message uh, to the two presidents. And I will uh, 
really request our honorary ambassador for IITA to really sign that message as we, you know, go to really appreciate uh, because I know what is behind them putting that energy into it. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I would like to indicate that uh, His Royal Highness Obasali Waditunji Ulubadan of Ibadan, um, he has some other engagements. But before he goes, he said he wants to give us a word of blessing. So we will want to ask the Oba. At this point, I take over. <laughs> Your Excellency, General Gawani, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of your state, Your Excellency, the President of the Africa Development Bank, Your Excellency, the representative of the acting President and Honorable Minister of Agriculture, your Excellency, the Director General of IITA, <laughs> distinguished senators, Dr. Kanayo, my distinguished awardee of uh, Africa Food Prize, Engineer Akuju, represented, rep representing Aliko Dangote, the chair of um, IITA Board of Trustees, Kabisi, Ekiwa, Igolunka. I thank God today. As I hear, I thank God. In the name of God, it will do another years. By the grace of God. Thank you very much. Kabisi said, in his own life, you will do another 50 years. <laughs> let, let me say at this point, our time is far spent, and yet you have a lot of ground to cover. And we need to have everybody listed on my paper to say something about the IITA and its golden jubilee anniversary. Except General Gawan, who I will not limit, but he will limit himself. <laughs> All the others are limited by the decree that, that General Gawan signed in 1967. <clears throat> oh, Honorable Minister for Agriculture, in your duty as representative of the acting president, you are 
only going to be limited by the work of two members of National Assembly here. <laughs> Uh, well, senators, I leave it to you. <laughs> so I, I, I think everything that needs to be said about the beginning has been said. The sign board. And we have heard from the chair of uh, the board of IITA that in fact, before the sign board, there was sign post. Sign posts in 1962, in 1963, and then, of course, it manifested itself in 1967. Sir, you have the floor. Mr. Chairman, Your Excellency, the Acting President, being represented. Your Excellencies, Prime Ministers, Governors, members of the Diplomatic Corps, and representatives uh, of international organization present. Your Royal Highness, distinguished and eminent invited guests and organizations, board of trustees, management and staff of IITA, ladies and gentlemen, I consider it a high honor and privilege to have signed the Decree 32 of 1967 that established the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, IITA, in Ibadan, and to have formally commissioned the Institute on Monday, 15 December, 1969. I'm humbled by God's grace that has made it possible for me to be here today to celebrate IIT's Golden Jubilee. But I feel sad that the former governor of the Western region, the late General Adenka Adebayo, is not here with us. Together, we worked assiduously to ensure that Nigeria did not lose the opportunity of having IITA in the country owing to delays in getting, uh, getting it off the ground. With his support, government was able to speedily address the issues of land and compensation of displaced people. In 50 years, IITA has matched and surpassed our vision of developing a productive farm system, particularly in the areas of research and development aimed at improvement and preservation of tropical food crops, as well as achieving a reduction of waste in the agricultural sector. My government enjoyed excellent cooperation from IITA, especially the sound advisory services that were significant input 
in all our development plans, 70 to 75, and notably our third national development plan, 1975 to 1980, that was planned to accelerate the economic transformation of Nigeria through agriculture. My only regret was that that plan was not followed up. But however, it seems as though it's been revived by uh, the recent few in the government and today. It is gratifying to note that IITA's love of soldiers, allow me to make this remark. <laughs> IITA's love for soldiers in or out of uniform has not waned even with the passing of time. Uh, this perhaps explains why the institute was established by a young soldier and it currently has an old soldier farmer. <laughs> I, can, I can assure you that young soldier was also a farmer. You, would, you can see his photograph in uniform carrying a hoe on a mess, uh, in, a, in, in a canoe uh, in a farm uh, in 72. Well, today you have an old soldier farmer as its ambassador for Africa. Not only ambassador for Nigeria, but ambassador for Africa. So, votre excellence. Well, a lot had been said earlier on, but let me uh, wish to sincerely thank both the Ford and Rockefeller Foundations. I think we saw them there earlier on. Uh, for the vision of IITA in Nigeria and Africa. I also wish to thank everyone, past and present, who has been a part of the Institute's success story in the country and Africa. I hope and pray for more and greater successes for IITA in the future and from what we have heard from the chairman and the director general, and probably what we will hear even more. Yes, the future of this institu uh, institution is going to be great. And even uh, the uh, Ford Foundation and Rockefeller, uh, Rockefeller uh, Foundation uh, leaders have rarely have seen a great thing in this institution. So I want to end by saying, yes, a lot is expected of you, and we know you can be able to achieve it. And thanks all those who are able to, uh, to help. And uh, my young inner friend, Chief Adesina, no, you are not a chief, are you? But, <laughs> But you, you, you are a chief of uh, ADB, so <laughs> may I say thank you for what you have done as Minister of Agriculture, which also your successor now is really following footsteps, trying to carry it on. And uh, I must say your activity, as far as those youth are concerned, I don't know whether those youth are those that determine wrote me a letter interested in agriculture, and I sent send, uh, send them to you. I said, probably you will know better how, how to help them and how to uh, handle them. Well, I hope that those you, those you that famine we've heard about, I hope they were the ones that uh, you started this in a scheme on, and I hope you will carry it on for the future. So may I say thank you all, and my, or let me say, our congratulations to IITA at 50. 
God bless you. Amen. Sir, General Gawan used to give me order. This is one occasion that I will give him order. Please sit down. Honorable Minister, I will, you, I will crave your indulgence to combine your work both as Minister and as representative of the acting President. So that being the case, you will speak last in this session. Um, it's now my duty to ask the President of the Africa Development Bank, President uh, General Gawan was asking you whether you are a chief. Now, to be a chief, he will have to come to me. <laughs> And General Gawan, you remember on one occasion you say, everybody who calls me uh, Baba Baba, you won't call me Baba. I say, well, they call me Baba not because I am, not only because of age, but because of my uh, position as Balugun of Uwu. <laughs> and, um, and I said, uh, if you want to be a chief, sir, uh, I can make you a chief. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but that is not uh, for today. We will talk about that privately. <laughs> um, President Akandeshina, I think on behalf of all of us who are present, let me congratulate you for your recent uh, award of uh, World Peace Award Food Prize. Well, there is a lot that I can say about a conditioner. I won't say them all now, except to say that for becoming the president of Africa Development uh, Bank, his work for that earns him only 45%. And the remaining 55% goes to his dear wife, Yemisi. Yemisi, please stand up and be recognized. <laughs> now, Aki, you have the floor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, before I start, I just want to say about Chief Tenses that His Excellency General Gawan and His Excellency President Obasanjo were also the, if you look at their, their titles, it was Commander-in-Chief 
of the Armed Forces of the Republic of Nigeria, so they are both chiefs anyway. <laughs> Your Excellency, the Acting President, Professor Yemi Oshibaje, represented by Chief Adu Ogbe, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. Your Excellency, the former Head of State, General Yakubu Gawan, our father. Your Excellency, former President, Chief Olushe Gunobasanjo, Baba. The former Prime Minister Mapon of the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Director General, the Excellency Governor Ajimobi of Oyo State, represented by the Deputy Governor, the Director General of IIT, my dear friend Dr. Sanginga, our host, Dr. Bruce Coleman, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of IITA, and all the members of the Board of Trustees of IITA, my senior brother. Dr. Kanayon Wanze and his lovely wife, former president of the International Fund for Agricultural Development, the director general of all the CGIR centers that are here present, distinguished senators, in particular, let me recognize uh, Senator Abdullahi because um, when I was Minister of Agriculture, um, he was also uh, one of the big people on the committee uh, that we work a lot together. And it's good to see you, sir, and see you in good health. Thank you very much, distinguished senator, also for being here. Your Kabiesi, Kadeo Kweliriki Badakweleso. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, staff members of IITA, friends of agriculture, and friends of IITA. My wife and I, and the African Development Bank, congratulate IITA on its 50th anniversary. Happy 50th golden anniversary. There are many things that I remember about IITA. First is the beauty of its campus, which remains unmatched globally. As a young boy, every time my dad would drive us by the front of the institute, I used to be so much in awe of his beauty. We used to call it America. For me, I did not need any visa to go to America. America was right here in Ibadan. I then had a dream to work at IITA, if only to have the opportunity of going to America without a visa. That dream came to pass in 1995 to 1998, when I was internationally recruited as senior economist and social science coordinator at IITA by the then Director General Dr. Lucas Brother, and I see Jenny Kramer here. She was here during that time. It's nice to see you. There, I spent three years out of my 10 years of working in the Global Agricultural Research Centers of the Consultative Group on International Agricultural Research, the CGIR, which included also working at the International Crops Research Institute for the semi Tropics, where Dr. Kanayo Nwanze took me under his wings and he beat me many times in tennis, I can tell you that too. <laughs> and the West Africa Rice Development Association, now the Africa Rice Center. Second, at IITA, I worked with world-class intellectuals, including several here today, and the current Director General, Dr. Sanginga, who was my colleague in the Resources and Crop Management Program. Publishing, and of course, Atakra, who is here today, Publishing in international journals was something we all celebrated. And the review process was so rigorous. But I must tell you, Dr. Sanginga was the most published scientist then in the whole of IITA. And no matter how much I tried, we just could not match him. IITA's work on alley farming sparked global interest in sustainable agriculture. Its landmark breakthrough on biological control, which saved Africa from the devastating cassava millibug that will have wiped out all of Africa's cassava, was globally recognized. The scientists that led that work won the prestigious World Food Prize, known as the Nobel Prize for Food and Agriculture. Third, my late father-in-law, Dr. Barnabas Orontobe, who as Nigeria's first federal director of agriculture, and then Federal Permanent Secretary of Agriculture, under the then Head of State, His Excellency General Gawan, 
and he later became also Federal Permanent Secretary under His Excellency uh, General Obasanjo at the time. He was instrumental in helping General Gowen in setting up IITA and later to become its Vice Chairman of the Board. He would have loved to be here. I knew Papa would have loved to, but he passed away two months ago. So you see, there's a history of institutional genetic linkages between IITA and I. Fourth, IITA has contributed so much to agriculture all across Africa, and of course right here in Nigeria. The institute developed the maize varieties that transform the savanna and the humid zones. Its carpi varieties supply the beans on our markets. Its soybean varieties led the soybeans revolution in Nigeria, and its work on cassava and yams still form the core of Nigeria's cassava and yams value chain transformation even till today. That's why, as Minister of Agriculture, I put IITA at the core of our agricultural transformation agenda. At the African Development Bank, we've decided to work with this amazing institution to drive Africa's agricultural sector transformation. The bank will be investing $24 billion in agriculture over the next 10 years to help turn agriculture into a business all across Africa. Our goal is to ensure that Africa fits itself, not in 30 years, not in 40 years, but within 10 years, and that we fully unlock the potential of agriculture. At the core of getting of this is getting technologies in the hands of millions of farmers. The bank has therefore developed what we call Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation, otherwise TAAT or TART, together with IITA and other CGIAR centers as a technology platform to help to take high yielding technologies to farmers for an African green revolution. The African Development Bank and the World Bank expect to invest up to $800 million in TAT, which we will launch this year. And I want to thank my director, Chiji Ojuku, who is here, who has worked a lot on that. <laughs> IITA is also at the core of the bank's work to develop a new generation of young agribusiness leaders for Africa. We call them the agripreneurs, who are all here today. IITA is developing the next generation of farmers for Africa, all of them university graduates. That is highly commendable. Please put your hands together for IITA for that. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, IITA is an institution that is run with transparency, honesty, and integrity, one that has stood the test of time. I am bold to say very loudly that I am very proud to be associated with IITA. Throughout my time as Minister of Agriculture, every fund we provided to this institute was very well used and properly accounted for with visible impacts everywhere. When I see that, even as President of African Development Bank today, in any institution, I will strongly support that institution. For integrity and accountability are the keys for success. The past 50 years of IITA have been full of successes. The next 10 years will be when we usher in the fulfillment of the dream to feed Africa. And IITA's role will be very important to our cause. I hope, by the special grace of God, to be back here then to celebrate its 60th anniversary. And that will really be a glorious one for Africa. Thank you very much and congratulations. Akin, I thought I didn't hear you well. I thought you were saying that you will come back here to, cent to celebrate the centenary <laughs> of IIT. Um, yes, um, without much ado, I will now call on the Honorable Minister of Agriculture to speak for himself and speak for the acting president. You have the floor.
Your Excellency, the former Head of State of Nigeria, General Yakubu Gawang. Your Excellency, former President, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo. Distinguished Senators, and in particular, the Senate Committee Chairman on Agriculture, who is my other boss. Your Excellency, the Vice, the Deputy Governor, of Oyo State, my predecessor in office, former Minister of Agriculture and now President of the African Development Bank. I see Dr. Nwanze and his wife here. You did us proud at IFAD, and we shall be formally announcing that in due course at the Ministry to thank you for what you did there. Dr. Sanginga, visiting former Prime Minister, directors, members of the board, deputy directors, researchers, scientists, staff and trainees, gentlemen of the press and great Nigerians who are here. I am here sent by the acting president to celebrate with you the 50th anniversary of the existence of this institution. It is indeed a thing of joy to be here with you, celebrating 50 years of this iconic institution, the best of its kind in Africa. What visitor, tourist, dignitary can come into this international institute without being overawed by the sheer aesthetic magnificence of this lovely environment? You wonder what goes on here before you get to know the details. Is this some holiday resort or some elaborate spa somewhere? Out in Acapulco or Montego Bay? It looks so lovely. It's such a beautiful meeting point between aesthetics and scientific research. It gladdens the heart and gives us hope that great things can also happen here. And I'll quickly congratulate General Gowan and Chief Obasanjo and all of you for establishing something which has endured and endured in splendor and in success. <laughs> IITA, you make us proud, you make us happy, you make us hopeful. You have been consistent in your mission, faithful to your mandate, and committed to the vision of your founders. We congratulate you and rejoice with you as you begin your journey into history. Having come this far in one half of a century, we have cause to rely on you and task you to join us in dealing with new challenges facing us as a country and Africa as a continent. Now, these are very serious existentialist issues for us and indeed for all of Africa. The first and most urgent is that of the population bulge at over 3% growth per annum, we are reportedly heading for 450 million Nigerians by the year 2050. That will place Nigeria in the third place after China and India. And in a world of 9 billion persons, that will award us the not very enviable position of containing 5% of the world's population. If these figures are realistic and not imaginary, then we have reason to worry. It's now also speculated that more children are born in Nigeria each day of the week than in the entire European Union. <laughs> if this is true, it is scary. The big question then is, how do we feed 450 million in just 32 years from now? Then there is the question of nutrition. Eating much is not the same as eating well. Carbohydrate alone can't do, and that's the bulk of our diet. How do we deal with issues of other nutrients in our food? 
of soil surveys and the application of the right kind of fertilizer to the right kind of crop for the right kind of soil. But we can't do it relying on an institute like this and others joining hands with you. If China and India did it, we too must. So as we move on, we must reflect on the challenge of quantity of output and quality of product. And to achieve this, we urge you to engage in research, more research, and even more research. You have done great things in the past, but research is not enough if the results of research are not marketed for universal application. In a society where the vast majority of farmers are smallholders, aging and not educated, more needs to be done. You have to commercialize your findings. You have to create subsidiaries of this institute. And if there is need for us to suggest to the National Assembly to pass adequate laws, you may have to create subsidiary companies whose business is to market your research findings on a large scale and earn you income. Governments are getting broke. <laughs> Governments and their capacity to fund you are diminishing. And if funding is almost 90% from outside, something has to be done within. Other countries have their troubles too. And they may not necessarily be always willing to send to us what they need for their own use. This way, you will not only expand your earnings, you will create jobs. You will open your doors and your scientific result, uh, researches for the use of the, the peasants, the small, the young, and even the older farmers. You've already done much in your fight against aflatoxin. You invented a cure, Dr. Sanginga. And aflatoxin has been a major challenge to grains. Just like the millibug have uh, devastated maize, uh, cassava production many years ago, the army worm is doing terrible things to maize production, affecting poultry and human consumption. On tissue culture, you're doing great, great work, and your research efforts have to spread far and wide for us to begin to produce varieties of tree crops in particular which are resistant to diseases of all kinds. In conclusion, we want to thank you, thank the host community. First, the government of Western Nigeria in those days, and now the government of Oyo State, and in particular, Leo Lubadon and his people for being such excellent hosts. We thank and congratulate the founders here present we thank and congratulate the directors general, past and present, researchers, 200 of you, and scientists, workers, everyone who in some way or ways has nurtured this institute to greatness. And I would like to say that on cassava, President Olushegun and Obasanjo and I used to sit at night in the villa talking about the prospects of cassava. One step more, sir, is a law to be passed by the National Assembly insisting that 20% of bread should be from high quality cassava flour. <laughs> now, this is absolutely necessary because even Brazil, which is one of the world's leaders in wheat, includes 20% of cassava flour in bread. If we can save 20% on wheat imports, to do us a lot of good. And one more word about yams. We are exporting yams. We intend to continue to export yams. And in reaction to those who are panicking, I say, let us see an opportunity and not a disaster. Our yams have been going abroad for the last 20 years through Ghana. They are labeled as Ghana yam. Nigeria accounts for 61% of the world's total output of yams 30% of them waste due to lack of preservation facilities, we will export. But those who are panicking, my request to them is join in the growing of yams. God bless you all.
Honorable Minister of Agriculture, now I know that you and your immediate predecessor, you do a lot in common, but hugging yourself so firmly and so warmly <laughs> in the presence of the uh, former Minister of Agriculture, in the presence of his wife, is not acceptable. <laughs> Yeah, and General Gawan is agreeing with me. <laughs> um, on that uh, very inspiring note, except, Minister of Agriculture, one thing that we must do and do quickly for the importation of our yam, and for our yam to be labeled and accepted as Nigerian yam outside Nigeria, is that we must have certification center. That is one thing that the Ghanaians have that we did not have. And the earlier we have that, the better it will be for us. And I may say to you, I hope you know about it, African Bank is actually trying to spearhead uh, the establishment of such a center. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. Yes, um, the idea was that we will have a break at this point, but uh, my former colleague, Senator Adamu, uh, will have to leave us earlier than expected. So, Sir, I crave your indulgence to have him to speak so that he can uh, take a bow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, the former heads of state, Your Excellency, the Honorable Minister for Agriculture, who doubles today as 17 our uh, acting president, the chairman of the Board of Trustees of uh, the IITA, very distinguished members of the board, and management of the ITA, distinguished visitors. Uh, do forgive me, I have to leave. I normally should have waited for the time I'm scheduled on the program. Uh, today happened also to be my birthday. And, <clears throat> and, and my members of our family and friends at home have organized some little reception for me. And I have only one flight to, fly, to take from Ibadan. And if I miss that flight, I probably will miss the reception for me at home. I want to say that all that is there to say about the ITA has been said. I do not want to repeat, you know, what very, very eminent uh, invitees here have already said about the achievements of this institution. I am a farmer myself, and uh, I'm privileged today to be the chairman of the Standing Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development in the Nigerian Senate. I have been associated with this institute since about 2012. I used to pass, like uh, President Adishina was saying a while ago, I was passing here when I was working for a chief Henry Fajabarukun uh, in Lagos as area representative in Kaduna for his establishments. Each time I drove past by this gate, I kept wondering what exactly was there. And I never had the opportunity to go into this gate, to come into this uh, premises until about 2012, when 
I was invited uh, as member of the Committee on Agriculture of the Senate to come for the investiture of uh, Chief Olushigo Basajo, the Balogun of O, to come when he was, going to, when he was being invested, uh, I mean, uh, installed as the ambassador of the IITA. That was my first time stepping here. Between then and now, I have made very personal and very official contact with people who are opportune to lead the affairs of this institution. And I'm more than encouraged with what I see happening here. I'm more than encouraged with the kind of plans that they have to move the fortunes of agriculture forward in Nigeria. You have been told the statistics of the growth of population, you know, that is being expected and unless and until we are sure that when this population come to be, we are in a position to feed them, not just feed them for feeding's sake, as the minister said, uh, feeding on gari is feeding, feeding on apu is feeding, or in sakwara is feeding, but how nutritious is the feeding we are having or will have for this population that is being expected? It's going to be an explosion of population. And unless and until some concrete plans are in place to face the challenges that will accrue, we'll be in trouble, God forbid. I remember the Vice President, your President, saying, let's walk. Pray, yes, but let's walk. And I remember Chief Hardwick was also telling me the other day when I was in his office that when Jesus was on, active when he was with the, uh, spreading the word of God, uh, he met a young man. And this young man, you know, was a kind of very busy, agitated one, very godly, and was spreading that word of God. And so Jesus was carried away by this guy he saw. He said, who are you? He told him who he was. He said, how? You know, what do you do? So he's spreading the word of God. He said, how do you eat? He said, my brother, here, you know, when he cooks in his house, they give me and they feed me. He said, well, your brother who works and gets the food at the table is a better man, man, of, man of God than you. So go and work. So I said to us that on a day like this, Yes, we celebrate what we've done, but let the challenge of the future be also with us. For unless we do so, we have a lot of problem that may confront us. Uh, it is my prayer uh, from what I heard the distinguished Director General say and uh, the assurances that we got from the chairman of the Board of Trustees, uh, there is hope for the future. Nigeria has all it takes. All that we need to grow agriculture is there. But we must get up and face the challenges and address appropriately the needs of growing agriculture. Uh, I am privileged to share this day with you to say a big, big congratulations to the board of uh, trustees, to management, and all those who have been associated with, you know, the sweat of this institution. That may God, in his infinite mercy, make it possible for us to live, to see the repetition of these uh, type of productive years that IIT has had. It is my hope and pleasure that we'll continue to associate and be with you. God bless. Senator, thank you very much. And uh, safe journey as you go back. And you did not tell me all the time we spent together last night that today is your birthday. Um, and that's all right. Um, what uh, that means is that you will have to come and celebrate 
your bad day for us here. Uh, you, you are allowed to go back now. Yours is uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, um, sir, distinguished, courtesy, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, we will now have a break, a break for two things, a break for, uh, no, three things, a break for group photograph, a break for cutting of anniversary cake, and a break for coffee. And all this we have to do within 10 minutes. So that, yeah, so that we will come back here by 25 past 11. 25 past 11. Now, this, don't forget, there was a decree signed in 1967. That decree is still active. Um, enjoy your break. Okay, uh, listen, when we, when yes, we come back, the representative of Dangote will be the first to speak. Now, 25 minutes past 11. Okay, dignitaries, please remain seated. Dignitaries, remain seated. In the front row and uh, on the second row, please remain seated. Please turn to the left. We left the two doors on the left. Yeah? You can move in there. We're going down this way. So please move through the door and you can get to the field outside. Dignitaries, please remain seated. Ladies and gentlemen, can I encourage you to move out pretty fast? Ashes, please talk to people who are chatting and get them to move, please. First place, I see a lot of people at the back chatting. I want this room to be empty. All those at the back. Please move. Ashes. people at the back, please help by moving out of the hall.
I can see the stars. 